Thank you very much. And um, you know, th this lecture is um, for us surgeons. So we had a lot of great lectures on like the physics, uh, physics of uh, energy. Uh, this is more a practical use on the instruments that we use uh, every day. So advanced bipolar devices. Actually, I have to admit, uh, when um, Malcolm gave his first lecture and said we should never use uh, monopolar energy and bipolar energy. The title of my slide was Advanced Bipolar Energy. So I had to go change it to Advanced Bipolar Devices. So thank you, Malcolm. I, I learn everything, uh, I learn uh, things every day. Okay, so uh, as far as my uh, disclosures, there are um, uh, companies that make these, these, uh, uh, these Advanced Bipolar uh, Devices, but I will not talking about a specific device. So we talked about a, a bunch of different things that we use in surgery. So uh, electrical magnetic energy, um, our basic mon monopolar uh, devices and our uh, bipolar devices, our lasers, and our mechanical energy devices that um, actually Dan talked about, the ultrasonic. And I feel like this, um, this lecture series should be about what is the best device to use and and why we should use it. So I think this lecture will highlight why <coughs> advanced bipolar uh, devices, in my opinion, are the safest um, uh, devices to use. And there's actually another category of energy devices or uh, tissue sealing devices called true cautery now. So if you go out to some of the um, other meetings, there's uh, actually instruments that actually heat up just like a hot rock, and they cool down very quickly. So these are true cautery devices, um, and the advantage of these are that the thermal spread, you would think it's actually larger, but it's actually smaller. So we know the basic, princi basic uh, principles of bipolar uh, the device. There's an active electrode in the tip itself. So the advantage of this is energy actually trans, um, transports from one active electrode to the second active electrode. In monopolar devices, you have a dispersive electrode and you have your active tensile, so that energy actually travels through the body. So the answer is if you have a patient that is critically ill with some type of pacemaker um, and you want to use the safest instrument, the safest instrument is a scalpel, right? No energy transfer except from your arm to your hand. Uh, probably the next safest instrument is an ultrasonic device. There is no really mechanical or uh, electrical surgical energy going through the body. It's all in the tip. The vibration of the ultrasonic causes the tissues to seal. And, and I think the next safest device is uh, advanced bipolar device because the energy is going through the tip. So uh, these are some of the advanced bipolar devices that are actually on the market here. So the one thing I really want to highlight is what type of injuries can you get with each one of these uh, devices? So the reason I think the advanced bipolar devices are the best because you get um, very little of the five effects that we've talked about. The thermal spread is definitely there for all devices and current leakage through the cores. So what is the thermal spread that we see with this? So this is probably one of the um, higher litigated uh, things that we see in the country. Somebody has a uh, injury to the ureter on a colorectal case, a, a hysterectomy, and most of us use a advanced bipolar device. So how does that thermal injury occur? So you don't have a transection of the ureter, but you have maybe a late leak or um, a fistula from the ureter to a structure. So basically what it is is we're using our instrument, we're coming down the white line of toe, we're, we're um, cognizant, we're trying to look for the ureter, we see the ureter, but our device is a millimeter away from that ureter, and you're like, whoa, I'm so lucky that I didn't transect it. But when you look at thermal spread, we know that thermal spread usually is probably one to three um, millimeters away from the, the edge of the instrument, but sometimes it can be actually further away from the instrument. And, um, here's a, a short video of me um, using an advanced bipolar device on a piece of ham. And there's a wire inside that screen. The wire is five centimeters away. On the right side of it is um, temperature in Fahrenheit. So we know that 60 degrees Celsius, we're going to get tissue death. So 140 degrees Fahrenheit 
is equivalent to 60 degrees Celsius. So you see that up on the very top, it's 224 degrees Fahrenheit, and at the tip of the instrument, um, it is in the 180 to 200 uh, Fahrenheit range. And when you look at the wire, I don't know if you can see the wire in the screen, that wire is five centimeters apart on a piece of cold ham. So that uh, definitely is the, the major um, message that I want to pass on, that advanced bipolar device is safe. The energy goes from one active electrode to the second. We're using the energy between the jaws, but that energy does transfer. So in cases where you're dissecting around critical structures, especially the ureter, and you're using one of these advanced bipolar devices, even if you identify that important structure and you're right next to it, you got to leave some room so that thermal spread can stay far away from the structures you don't want to injure. So the, the other um, uh, problem that we can see is current leakage, and we see that with almost everything with the cord. So the active electrode cord uh, can leak the current through the insulation of the cord. So we definitely don't want to wrap that around a, a metal clamp. We always want to use uh, a non-insulating um, or non-conducting non clamp. Uh, and you want to keep your cord bundles away from um, our devices. So I think this is a very important slide. So why should you use an advanced bipolar device versus a monopolar device versus an ultrasonic device? So the real pro is it doesn't uh, require a dispersive electrode per se. We don't have to put that pad on. Energy does not travel through the body. We're doing a, 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 a trauma case or an acute case and Maybe we don't have time to um, get that x-ray to look at the pacemaker. Um, it uses low voltage uh, during device, the cut mode, and we've um, kind of talked that, about that throughout our lecture series here. Energy stays between the jaw, and probably a little um, advantage over an ultrasonic device, we can uh, seal vessels up to seven millimeters size, but the ultrasonic devices are kind of catching up with that. Um, I think the only cons really is the thermal spread that we see with uh, each device and, uh, of course, a significant uh, increase in cost compared to a monopolar uh, instrument. So what are some of the mechanisms that make the advanced uh, bipolar devices safer? It has this smart generator technology, and most uh, companies have this. So it has near real-time impedance feedback uh, on the <coughs> instrument. So. Um, I'm sure you all have tried this, right? You're like, wow, that's a, that's a five millimeter vessel. I'm gonna seal it three times, right? You go in the middle, you seal it, and you count, oh, that took three seconds. But, you know, I'm, I'm not confident, so I'm gonna go over it again, the same spot, and you activate it, and you're like, oh my God, that took three seconds again. So why doesn't it just take a, a half a second, right? So the way these uh, devices work is it, uses a change in um, impedance, so a, a delta change. So you say you start at an impedance of 30. It has this um, impedance range that you want to get to 130. So when you go from 30 to 130, you hear the beeps. And then you go over the same area again, but now the impedance starts at 130. So it, it needs a delta change of you know whatever the number is for that unit. So it goes from 130 to 240. And you're like, wow, that still took five seconds. So you hit it again in the same spot, and it takes another five seconds. It goes, what is going on here? So the way to use these devices correctly is you go in one spot, you get a delta change in resistance. Then you go to a different spot. You get another delta change in resistance, and then the third spot, if you really want to, and you cut right in the middle. So that's the correct way, and that's why this near uh, real-time impedance uh, works for these advanced um, instruments. And there is a uh, pulsing rapid on and off for these systems, and of course an audible signal. So that's, that's when you know that the change in resistance uh, has occurred. So one of the things that's very important, there's two factors when you think of advanced bipolar devices. One is the mean brush pressure, and the second is the time to reach um, the uh, ceiling point. So mean um, brush pressures throughout multiple instruments are good, they're over 200. Um, the mean mercury of pressure. So uh, definitely if you have a patient that's really hypertensive in the 250, if you're using some of these devices, you've got to get their um, uh, pressures down. So we know that uh, typical blood pressures in surgical <coughs> patients kind of have this range, so we're well above that uh, systolic blood pressure range. 
Um, this study kind of, or this, this slide looks at seal time. So different devices have uh, different seal times. So if you're used to using one device and your hospital switches over and you're like, you know, you, you, you have to read the um, manufacturer's uh, IFU on the uh, seal time so you have the correct seal time. So what are the best practices on using advanced bipolar devices? So uh, Dan talked about the ultrasonic, about you need coaptation, so the vessels have to be sealed. And with ultrasonic, really, you have to kind of lift up just a little bit to get the tissue to seal. So with advanced bipolar, that's not the same. So basically what you do is you want no tension, you, you close the jaw, and you let the instrument actually do its job. Very important, keep that jaw clean. So if you're, if you're doing a, a sleeve gastrectomy and you're taking down the short gastrics and you're moving along and you see this char build up on your jaw, you gotta pull that out. Clean that char off because it will affect the type of seal uh, that you'll have. So um, this is one of my last slides and I think this is one of the most important things that we'll talk about uh, when we talk about advanced bipolar. So these are all the different devices that you can use. Modern polar, advanced bipolar, ultrasonic and a, a new category, the advanced cautery devices. So we definitely see thermal spread with all the devices, right? The device heats up, energy is going through the tissue, we're gonna get thermal spread. So that's something that we need to kind of look at. Direct coupling um, is when, so intentional direct coupling, you hold your um, hiccups, you get the monopolar pencil, you touch the monopolar pencil, you get the tissue effect, that's direct coupling, and that's sometimes positive. We see that in monopolar devices. You can't do that with an advanced bipolar device. You can't do that with the ultrasonic. And advanced cautery, you can't do that because if you get that heated advanced cautery and you put it to your pickup, that pickup will heat up to a very hot temperature, so you can't do that with that device. Capacitive coupling, and I really wanna take some time to talk about this because um, Monroe explained it, but it's a very confusing concept. So monopolar devices, we get it uh, with laparoscopic uh, cases. You have a active electrode um, through a, a, a insulator, and on the other side of it, uh, or the energy buildup, we can have that discharge. So monopolar devices are notorious for, um, for this uh, type of uh, problem. Advanced bipolar, we don't see it because the energy is actually focused uh, between the jaws. Ultrasonic, we don't see it. The energy is at the very tip. Um, inverted activation, we can see with all the devices, direct thermal extension, usually with the monopolar devices, and current leakage with anything with a cord. So the nice thing about having um, cordless instruments, right? We thought cordless instruments were great because it's a, it is a um, factor that we don't have to wrap another cord, but if you think about it, cordless devices actually takes out one of the injury mechanisms that we see in surgery. So in conclusion, uh, understanding the fundamental uh, use of surgical energy in the operating room is everybody's responsibility that works in the oper uh, operating room. Choose the right energy tool for the task at hand. And once again, tissue death happens at 60 degrees Celsius. For us in America, 140 degrees Celsius or uh, Fahrenheit. And allow time for your active energy source to cool down. Thank you very much for your time.